Hey everyone, my name is David Rao and I'm the music teacher who blogs at makemomentsmatter.org. You can also find my ideas on Facebook, on Pinterest, on Twitter, on Instagram, um, on YouTube, and a variety of other places when you search for my name, David Rao, or Make Moments Matter. Um, I'm so excited to be sharing with you this week. I'm going to be filling you in a little bit about my uh, kindergarten through fifth grade lessons, all of those lessons for the week. I'm going to share um, just a few of my favorite uh, books for teaching uh, in November, so primarily Thanksgiving and fall themed books, uh, because it's time to start thinking ahead for some of that if you don't have those books and you need to find them or get them. So I'm going to talk a little bit about those books, and then I'm also going to be sharing about a deep dive into my first grade lessons for the week um, and sort of fill you in on the process and how I teach some of that and some of the procedures and things that go into um, those lessons. So let me just jump right in. Uh, before I guess before I do that, I better just remind everyone that if you are interested in any of the links, the resources, the books, the music, the things that I'm talking about in the lesson, um, I've tried to compile those all on a links page on my blog. My blog's makemomentsmatter.org. Um, or if you're watching on Instagram, you can click my link in profile and there should be a link directly to that page, the Musical Mondays recap page. If you're watching on Facebook, um, at the bottom of the caption for this video, there should be a link right to that links page. And if you're listening later on the podcast version or something, there should be a link in the show notes. But uh, all, all of these resources that I'm going to talk about are linked there in case you're interested and you go, hey, I want to find that or you want to learn more about the book and then want to go rent it from your local library. All those links and information is there for you if you're interested. Um, or you can also uh, join their Facebook group, which is Every Moment Matters, a music education community. And um, that's on Facebook. You can just click and join that group and ask any question you may have. Um, I've been doing a couple workshops in the last month or so, and I always love to say, like, there are no dumb questions. I've only been teaching for a few years and, and every year I feel like I have more dumb questions and I do all this training and I read all these books and I still feel like I've got these questions that are like embarrassing to ask, but we all have those questions. So I hope that that Facebook group, um, I hope that videos like this are a place for you to ask those questions that you might think like, I should know this by now, but I have a lot of those questions still. So please ask the questions and we, we, learn, to be, we learn best in community. And so to be able to ask those questions is so important. Okay, so there's that, that Facebook group. Um, if you're in Saskatchewan, I hope that I'm going to get to see you uh, this Friday, Saturday. I'm going to be at the Saskatchewan Music Conference. I'm so excited to be uh, coming to Canada to share. Uh, so if you see me in the hallways, I know like zero people in Canada. So please come and say hello. It'd be so nice to meet folks there. Okay, so uh, quick reminder, I'm going to get to my kindergarten through fifth grade lessons for the week. I'm going to do a deep dive on first grade. First, I just wanted to show you a few of my favorite Thanksgiving books because um, I know it, it's not yet November, but by the end of the week it will be. And if you want to use these books in your lessons in November, you need to start really finding them, sourcing them now. So maybe that means pulling them from your classroom library. Maybe that means pulling them from your school library, requesting them through your public library. Um, you could also buy the books. Um, all the links that I share on my links page are almost completely, almost totally to Amazon. Some of those books are no longer available through Amazon, maybe through a third party seller or whatever. Um, but you can always take down the ISBN. Um, you can take down the author's information from that links page and then go to a discount book website, go to a bookstore and find the book yourself if you're interested. But um, I'm going to share about those books now and sort of give you some ideas about how I use some of these. Um, and then um, just let you know so that you are aware in case you want to use some of these books. One of my favorite ones to use the week of Thanksgiving, not in the weeks leading up to, but in the week of Thanksgiving is this one called Twas the Night Before Thanksgiving. Um, it's by Dave Pilkey, who has written several other books that our kids know. Um, and so it's a really, really fun book, but it's about um, a class that takes a field trip to a turkey farm, like the week of Thanksgiving. Um, and, it, and it follows the rhyme scheme over the river and through the woods with winding and weaves, their school bus sailed on through the neat through the new and fall and leaves. Clearly, I have not read this in a year, so I can't really sing it out. But it does follow the rhyme scheme of Over the River and Through the Woods. Um, it's a super fun book. And they meet the farmer. They meet all the turkeys. They fall in love with the turkeys. Um, I love this super cute picture of all the kids, like, having fun and playing with the turkeys. And then they ask, like, wait, what's this axe for? <laughs> And then it becomes very serious. And so the the kids are start crying and the farmer and his wife go like, oh no, and go to like run to get water for the kids. And when they come back, the kids are no longer crying. Um, but if you look, it's very obvious that the kids have gotten much bigger and they're all hiding turkeys under their clothes. 
um, and they get back on the bus and they, they spirit away the turkeys and the turkeys are saved. Um, and on Thanksgiving day, all the kids eat veggies and jelly with to jelly and toast and everyone's thankful the turkey's the most. It's a super, super cute book um, and, and fun to bring in, if you, especially if you teach over in the river and through the woods or um, you know anything Twas the Night Before Christmas or whatever. It's, it's just a fun book to use. And like I said, Dave Pilkey is an author that kids will know. I think he did Captain Underpants. I can't remember, <laughs> but um, an author that kids will know that will be familiar to them. Speaking of Over the River and Through the Woods, I teach that every year in some variation and form to my students because it really is a Thanksgiving song um, and it is very much American. It's from Massachusetts. So it's a, a really cool song to bring in with students. So I have a couple books that I can use with younger grades because in older grades we sing and learn some of the verses. But with younger grades, there are a couple different options you can use. Um, I've been eyeing this book, this version by Derek Anderson um, for years, and it is a super cute book. Um, I just now got it this year. It's fun because um, it shows the turkeys going over the river and through the woods. They're going to grandmother's house. Um, and it's just some fun illustrations and things. Um, and along the way, they're again, trying to be hunted down by people who want to eat turkeys, but luckily they make it. So <laughs> it's a, it's a fun, sweet little book. Um, and let me see if I can get sort of here to the end. So it, it does talk about a hound. It talks about a turkey. They turn into a scarecrow for a second, but super fun, super great visual, especially for learners who need those visuals. Um, another favorite over the river and through the woods is this one. This one um, is illustrated by Emma Randall and it just has some sort of gorgeous photos. I have another book of hers that I use at uh, Christmas and so this is fun because kids sort of recognize some of the illustrations. But just sort of really pretty decorations, really pretty illustrations in here um, that go along with the traditional lyrics of the song. Um, kids think that it's pretty fun, it's cool, you can show a sleigh, um, and it's just very, very kid-friendly, great for K or one. Um, and then another version that I just got this year, which is my maybe the favorite, the one I might use this year, is this version of Over River and Through the Woods by Linda Ashman, illustrated by Kim Smith. And this is like a, a non, sort of non-traditional version, um, and it's cool because it shows this like huge, ginormous extended family um, and it goes, come to our house for the holidays and bring your favorite pie, love grandma and grandpa. And it's these very diverse extended versions of families all over the country and how they get there. Um, so the first one is, you know, like, oh, we get in the car, we drive, and it does follow the, the scheme. Pack up the pooches and load the van. We need to leave by eight. There's so much to bring. Do we have everything? Come on, we can't be late. Into the tunnel, across the bridge, beyond the overpass. Dad mumbles, uh-oh, the fuel gauge is low. Looks like we need some gas. Mile after mile on two-lane roads, no stations along the way. No gas, not a drop. We sputter, then stop. We start to walk, and then, nay! And along comes someone in a sleigh. Well, guess what? This happens to every family. It happens to the family coming from the city. Um, and they, you know, can't get from the train station to the house. So guess what? They get picked up by the sleigh. It happens to the family coming through the airport. Um, they, you know, land and then the shuttle trying to take them to where they need to go has a flat tire. Well, guess what? They get picked up by the sleigh. So it's just a super, super cute version of this. And uh, there's a family traveling by hot air balloon because why not? Um, but they all come in this huge ginormous sleigh and show up and, and have a great time with family. And I just love it because it's such um, a colorful book, the, the, um, the diverse representation of different families, different kinds of families, um, different you know groupings of people. It's just so cool and inclusive and a super great one to have. Plus also it shows all different kinds of transportation. Um, it, it ties in the sleigh idea. So it's just a fun book. You could also, you could use um, you know, this version of the turkeys of the fusion, the other version I shared by Emma Randall, and then share this version, which is sort of a, a variation. That'd be a fun to do too. But all great over the river and through the woods books based on a traditional Thanksgiving song. So a couple others I found this year, I found this one called the 12 days of Thanksgiving based on the, you know, the, the theme of 12 days of Christmas. Um, and this is another fun one too, that shows all different kinds of families. On the first day of Thanksgiving, I was thankful for an evening at home with family. 
on the second day of Thanksgiving, I was thankful for two sacks of apples and an evening at home with family. On the third day of Thanksgiving, I was thankful for three fall squash, two sacks of apples, and an evening at home with family. And it goes on <clears throat> until the very end. Twelfth day of Thanksgiving, I was thankful for twelve cousins giggling, eleven hot pies cooling, ten uncles baking, nine aunts arriving, eight loved ones hugging, seven sport fans playing, six turkeys gobbling, five piles of leaves, four golden buckles, three fall squash, two sacks of apples, and in an evening at home with family. Happy Thanksgiving. So super cute little book, uh, fun rhyme. I gotta take this sheet of stickers out before I use it with kids, but it's fun to have that in there. Um, another one that you might use in case you teach the song is this version of Simple Gifts. Um, if you teach this song, because that's another sort of a traditional American song, this version by Chris Roshka, um, I've seen on a lot of different music teacher bookshelves, but it is just sort of an illustrated version of uh, the famous Shaker song. Tis the gift to be simple, tis the gift to be free, tis the gift to come down where we ought to be. So it's just sort of fun and it's cool if you could tie this in with maybe your art teacher and talk about, you know, different representations of lyrics or different ways that you can illustrate a concept. This is fun and it does sort of look like something that kids would do in their art class to sort of give an illustration or representation of the words. So that's a super fun book. Um, uh, just a version of Simple Gifts in case you teach that song. Even if you don't teach it, you could show the book and then sing it for kids and that would be a cool option as well. And then um, this one called Run, Turkey, Run by Diane Mayer, illustrations by Laura Rader. R Rader? Rader? I'm not sure. Um, run, turkey, run. Clompity, clomp. Here comes the farmer. Oh, see the pig pen? If turkey rolls in the mud, will the farmer think he's a pig? No! Run, turkey, run. Muckety, muck. Here comes the farmer. It follows that scheme sort of throughout the book. <laughs> the, the turkey's here in a snorkel, um, trying to hide in the duck pond. Um, but it's just a, a fun, fun book. I'm going to tie it in with the song Shoe Turkey, um, which is another sort of fun traditional song. Um, the farmer does not actually end up eating the turkey. He ends up eating grilled cheese sandwiches, so another one where the turkey is saved. Um, but it's just a super cute little book, and it's going to be one that's going to connect pretty well with the song um, Shoe Turkey. And it, um, if you don't know that song, Shoe, shoe, shoe turkey, throw your feathers way under. Shoe, shoe, shoe turkey, throw your feathers way under. just happen to have the book where I learned it, Step It Down by um, Bessie Jones and Bess Lomax Hawes. This is, that's where I got that, that version of the book. But if you own this book, the song Shoe Turkey is in there. And then one more I want to end with is this song, I Know an Old Lady Who Swallowed a Pie. So again, another famous song that they're just sort of riffing on the Thanksgiving version of it. Um, and it's a super fun one. This one is by Allison Jackson, pictures by Judith Byron Schossner. Schossner. And I've shared about this one before. Um, it does not fall in that same long series, This but there was an old lady who yada, 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 whatever it is she did, by Lucille Calandro, illustrated by Jared Lee. This one is the most famous that you see all over every place in like every teacher's room. But um, this version by um, Allison Jackson and Judith Byron Schossner is not as common, but you still see it quite a bit. This is a fun one because she just keeps eating stuff. And it's like in the, in the photos, <laughs> in the illustrations, like she also looks surprised by how much she's eating, which is really hilarious. Um, and the cider she drinks and the rolls she eats and all sorts of stuff. But what's really funny is that by the end she balloons up and they like, she can barely fit in the house and they pull her outside and tie a rope to her foot and she becomes uh, one of the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade balloons. So that's another sort of fun uh, tie-in if you think your kids are gonna watch the Macy's Parade. Um, but it's just a, a really cool book, ver uh, book version of you know the song that kids may already know. So that's a cool one to have too. Th that's my Thanksgiving book list. Um, I have probably a couple more at school, but um, those are the ones that I'm planning on using currently this year. And like I said, all of those are linked on the links page. I actually have a whole list on Amazon of just Thanksgiving books. Um, these plus a few more in case you're interested, you need to 
few more books for inspiration. And like I said, you don't have to buy them from Amazon, but they're all listed there. Um, the ISBN numbers are there. The pictures and authors are all there. So you can go to you know Better World Books or thriftbooks.com um, and buy them at a discount. Just don't wait too long because Thanksgiving is, is coming very soon. Okay, so the, that's my quick rundown of my Thanksgiving books um, that I wanted to share. Um, and let's see, there's, um, yeah, there are a couple more books I'm going to share in just a little bit, but I'm going to run through my kindergarten through fifth grade lessons and then jump as quickly as I can into first grade. Okay, so kindergarten, they come in. We've been doing this train song for weeks and weeks and no longer. Now they're going to come in and do the circle song that all my K1 and 2 classes do. Um, I've shared about it before, and the, the song is, Come and make a circle, circle, circle. Come and make a circle all around. Take hands together, everyone together. Once we've made a circle, then we'll all sit down. I, I first heard that song when I was observing uh, my friend Andrew Ellingson. Um, I'm not sure if he came up with it or if he heard it from somewhere else. I'll reach out to him and ask. But um, it's just based on the song Button You Must Wander, if you know that song already. And it's just, it, you could change the words, you could change them a little bit. It's just one that we sing as they walk in and, and they know it. It's very easy. It's like as they walk in, that's the first thing they do is come and make the circle and sing the song. So now kindergarten is doing that. Um, we have a quick routine for K1 and 2 that all classes do. Um, and <clears throat> so they make the circle. We do a little copycat game. And in about two or three minutes, we get a chance to do like a clapping uh, clap, I clap, they echo, I clap, they echo, about four examples. Then we do our poem again. Um, I'll, we'll do some sort of vocal exploration. We'll usually tie in some solfege. Um, we'll might do a padding example, something so that we just have a little bit of padding, a little bit of clapping, a little bit of you know repeating and, and getting ourselves ready is sort of a warming up our brain for the lesson. But also it's just a way to like, if we don't hit solfege so much in this lesson, this is our chance to, to give a little recap so they get it. So they get just a little bit and at least hear the vocabulary over again. Um, one thing that I've added is that I've started using my yarn ball um, in the vocal exploration. So as they toss it, it goes like woo, 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 woo. And I, I let, um, I, I do an example with that where I toss it around and as it goes up, their voices go up. When it goes up very high, their voices go very high. It's fun to throw the yarn ball way in the air and let it fall all the way to the ground and have them go woo and then stop when it hits the ground. It's fun to see kids do that. Um, and then I let kids hold it and, and do it. And I choose about four different kids in every lesson who get to toss the yarn ball around. Um, it's super fun for them. And also it gives them a chance to control what's happening with the vocal exploration. So that's sort of fun. And I've shared before, and it is in the links, um, a blog post about how to make your own yarn ball if you're interested. It's really easy. Um, it just takes a little bit, of, well, a lot of time and a little bit of yarn. <laughs> Um, so we, we go through, um, we pull out our tone blocks, do a few, echo, uh, a few echo examples with our tone blocks. I'll talk more about that in the first grade lesson. We do a song by Shenanigans called Highway Number One, which is uh, basically, there's been a theme in my kindergarten class of like transportation. So <laughs> we do, um, our, we've done our train song, um, we've driven around, we've pretended we're in hot air balloons to give ourselves bubble spaces, all sorts of stuff. And so now we're talking about driving, and in this song, you drive around highway number one, which is this highway that circles basically the exterior of Australia, and in every major city, you stop, and you see someone, and you do what they say. So if the person, you know, you're driving around, you're driving around, you stop at Perth, and maybe the person at Perth says, hop, 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 and stop. And so then kids get to hop, 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 hop. Hop, 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 and then you drive to the next city and maybe, I don't know, maybe you go to Brisbane. And then at the next place, they'll say like, you know, wiggle, wiggle, shimmy, or whatever it is they say, and the kids have to do that. It's a super fun song. You can find it by um, a group called Shenanigans. You can find it on Spotify. I know, I'm not sure about other streaming services, but if you search highway number one, Actually, I'm pretty sure you can find it on YouTube as well. It's, it's just a super fun song that, that kids get to move around to. And the cool thing that we do in my room is, you know, kids pretend they have a steering wheel and 
I have to teach them like, oh, you got to turn a key to turn the car on instead of like push, pushing a button because some kids are like, key. Anyway, so we turn the key, we turn the car on, and then we pretend to, I show them a map of Australia, I show them where highway number one is, and we talk about driving around the edge. So then we drive as close as we can to the edge, to the walls of our classroom. And along the way, I mean, the cool thing about this song is there's a formula of, you know, drive, 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 stop, follow the command, drive, 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 stop, follow the command. And that's fun, it gets them moving in different ways, but it also gives them a chance to sort of do a tour of the music room. And so as they're going around the edges of the room, they're noticing, oh, there are instruments over here. Oh, there are puppets right here. Oh, if I stop here, I'm close to Mr. Rouse's desk. And it's sort of, I, I like giving them a chance to, through this activity, to drive around the room and to see different parts of it. Because there are some, I, I remember going to my elementary music classroom and like saying like, oh, I loved going to stand by the instrument shelves because I got to see all these cool things. Well, this gives kids a chance to do that uh, and to explore a little bit. And they can't touch because they're driving, right? Their hands are on their steering wheel, but they do get to move around um, and to get a little bit more experience through the room. Then we do um, Let Us Chase the Squirrel, which is a fun song. I, I pull out uh, Skippy, my squirrel puppet. He introduces the song, and we talk about how the squirrel, and he you know, hot, goes up the hickory, down the hickory. We talk about other trees the squirrel could go up and down, and why the squirrel might be running around the hickory or apple or magnolia trees. Um, and then um, Skippy brings out his smaller friend, I have a finger puppet version of a squirrel, which is absolutely adorable. And when we play, there's a there's a game that goes with the song. It's sort of a duck, duck, goose game. And we sit in a circle and um, as the kids run around, they gotta hold the, the little squirrel. Now I've done it where kids just hold the squirrel or put their finger in the finger puppet, but that takes a long time to like, take their finger out, put, give it to the new kid, that kid puts the puppet on, that whole thing. So what I've learned about finger puppets is that you can take just a regular mallet and you can put that inside the finger puppet and then when you're doing like a chase game or a switching game or something, instead of having to like take time to you know switch the puppet to different kids, you can have them just hand the mallet to the next kid and the next kid can hold on. They can even hold on to the outside of the puppet as they're running, but mostly they're holding the mallet. And the good thing about that is I can lice all this mallet I can't really, you know, like use a Lysol wipe on the puppet itself. So it's nice to be able to have this uh, puppet on a mallet to make transitions a little bit easier, to make everything else a little bit easier too. Okay, so that's kindergarten. I'm gonna skip first grade because I'm coming back to first grade. Second grade, um, they come in, we do um, our circle song, we do our echoing, we do tone blocks, we do hand drums as well. We take a chance to remember, it, you know, in that echoing, repeating, coming back and forth, we have a little bit of time to re sort of rehash the difference between steady beat and rhythm. Um, and so it's fun now that they're old enough, I can have one group do the steady beat while other group play, you know, echo, co copy my rhythm. But it's nice to have them do that sort of together. So half the group is doing one thing, half is doing the other, and to rehash uh, that vocabulary of rhythm versus steady beat. Um, we do a little bit of solfege. Um, and then we get to go to the barred instruments and we do a day of basically exploration, taking off bars, putting on bars, holding mallets, moving things around, figuring out where to tap. And then it culminates in this fun game from Mallet Madness by Artie Almeida. And the, the game is called, I can never remember the actual name, what she calls it. I always just call it the conductor game. Um, she calls it Body Director. It's on page 23 if you own this book. If not, you should get it. It's a great book, especially if you want a lot of fun like exploration games, um, things to get kids thinking. But um, in the game, there are a couple commands and the kids have to watch you move to know how to strike the instrument. So they can do alternating hands, they do hands together, they can do a glissando, they can do a tremolo, all the things kids want to do. But the cool thing about this game is that it sort of uh, controls how they do it and it gives them a form to how to do it. And then what's really great is, you know, they have to watch you, the conductor, to know what to play and how to play. And if, you know, kids have done it enough times, you can have a student come up and be the director, the conductor and they get to lead the instruments and that is so fun for kids and they would play that for a hundred hours.
but it, it's one that you it's great if you're tying it into a lesson of like how to hold the bar, the mallet correctly how to play nicely how to switch and give the mallets to somebody else and and the cool thing is that then they're doing all those things that you want those procedure things and those technique things and they just think it's a game but it's it's a great way to teach and reteach some of those skills so we've done some instrument stuff before, but this is sort of going back and remembering, um, trying out again. Now we're bigger kids and we're remembering how to do everything correctly. So that's a fun game to try. Third grade, we're getting ready for our family folk dance nights, plural, because I have so many students. We're going to be doing two different nights, half the grade in one line, half the grade in the, the next night. Um, so basically, this is just we're, we're in the final stages, so we're just going to sort of run through and remember everything. So, oh, let's, you know, do the song that has the, the swing your partner and the do si do and the circle left and that, you know, it's remembering and rehashing and giving kids a chance to just feel really comfortable and good at it. So uh, we, we try and run through all of the songs that we're doing for that concert. And if you haven't been following along in the last couple of weeks, the songs that we're doing for our folk dance night, um, the PE teacher and I are, are, are sort of planning it together. And he has a couple songs that I can't remember exactly what he's doing, polka dot something um, and then we're gonna in on from my half we're doing um, Sasha we're gonna do Old Brass Wagon a song called Solomon Levi uh, Los Machetes and then um, the Grumpy March so uh, some favorite songs some great songs things some that we'll do for our parents and some that we'll do with our parents I'm really excited about it fourth grade we're just getting ready for our big concert which is December around the world I know it's only in October but we got to do it now <laughs> um, and so what we've done is we've broken it down so there the first song and the last song we do is a huge group and then each of the little songs in the middle each homeroom sort of gets their own featurette their own little song and so this we're working on those little sort of mini songs in the middle next time we're going to need to do um, auditions for speaking parts because that's coming up really quick um, so we're, we're getting really into the thick of things with fourth grade and fifth grade in the last le um, last week I talked about sort of the instrument exploration the things that we're doing with fifth grade because I have a really squirrely group of fifth graders and they're just not they're they're not really settling the way that they need to and so what i've done in this lesson is sort of taking them back almost to what we're doing with second grade almost but a fifth grade version of that so that we're talking about how to take the instruments off the shelf how to put them back how to classify them so you know where to put them back how even if they didn't have labels on them how to talk about that how to hold mallets how to switch you know and then what's great with fifth grade is we're getting into improvisation we're remembering chord bordoon which is hands together broken bordoon hands separate crossover bordoon which is hands up and over that all factors into this one lesson it's a lot of review um, it's a little bit of exploration it's remembering but but what it really is is i sort of set it as like we just can't go on if you can't be responsible so like if, you, if you're not going to be able to you know do this you won't get to play instruments and when I'm handing out instruments I say wow your duet is doing really well you can go choose an instrument first and when I do it just like mini group by mini group they sort of are like "Ooh, we gotta like follow the directions if we're gonna play and so the the way we scaffold into it is is a lot of you know it, it sets it on them and it's really interesting when it's always like the last two kids who don't have an instrument I'm like sitting watching like oh yeah you don't have an instrument yet because you've been clowning around. So I don't think I can trust you on the instrument. Maybe you'll just have to watch for a minute. And But it's it's really great because it gives them a reason to really work hard and participate. And and I have had like, not it's not perfect, but the amount of behaviors that I've had have gone down significantly and they all want to do it. And so it, um, we in the last video, I shared more of the process of that. And so in this lesson, what we're doing now is we're trying to get through all the Bordunes in one class, remembering everything else we've done. Um, we're applying it to songs that we already know, and we're also adding improvisation. So it's sort of a culmination plus of uh, what we've already done. Okay, and that's my kindergarten through fifth grade. I'm going to quick run through and make sure I didn't miss anything um, on the comments here before I move on to first grade. Uh, someone said there's an old lady who swallowed a turkey book that is part of the series that I referenced. So that would probably be the series uh, by Lucille Calandro, illustrated by Jared Lee. That's a super cool series. Um, and that would be a great one to use for Thanksgiving. And I see someone on uh, Instagram asked, what was the mallet book? Uh, the mallet book is a super amazing book called Mallet Madness by Artie Almeida. She is 
fabulous, a really wonderful educator. If you guys ever go to an RD workshop, go. It's great. Um, but her book is really wonderful. She, there's another book called Mallet Madness 2. And both of those books are really, really great if you have ORF instruments and don't know what to do. Or if you have ORF instruments and you do know what to do, but you want some really fun, like, superstar lessons that are going to help kids get started and get settled or you can intersperse with other stuff it's just a great resource to have so absolutely worth purchasing that and there are links to that in case you're curious on the links page okay so um let's jump into first grade oh and i i, I forgot earlier because you know like this time of year your brain is so full of like everything right and i when i was talking about um, my thanksgiving books i was going to say also start thinking about thanksgiving bulletin boards because that's going to sneak up on you too so i've had a bulletin board up for a long time that needs to switch out and i just pulled out i had in storage i've been using it for a couple years now there are a couple bulletin board sets i go between for thanksgiving um one i created last year called the rhythm of life or the rhythm of fall and it's just like 30 different or 18 or i don't know how many words but it's uh fall themed words and then the rhythms that go with them that's so much fun because kids walk along and read all of them <laughs> and then they read the rhythm and they make those fun connections that one i used last year so i felt like i couldn't use it again this year so the one I'm using this year is another one I've uh, done called Give Thanks for Music. And it's just a, it's an advocacy bulletin board that's like secretly a Thanksgiving board, but it's not. Um, so thanks to music, studies show that people who have training in music are better able to express emotions they're feeling. Kids never read these slides. Adults read these slides. Kids don't really care about those. Kids look at the fun, um, the quotes, and, and the cool kids with the fun colors. This one says, if you pour some music on whatever's wrong, um, it'll sure help out. That one's by LaVon Helm. Oh gosh, there's another fact in there. That's for an adult, okay. <laughs> Uh, India Ari says, I was very fortunate to have learned the transforming power of music early in life. As an adult, I want to share that power by inspiring people to care about their neighbors near and far. There's a quote by Jimi Hendrix. There's a quote by Pablo Casals. Um, there are just some, some fun quotes and stuff in there. Um, and then what kids really love is that I have some notes in here that look like um, cream pies that look like cream pie with a little stem on the side. Um, I also have pumpkin notes, which are another huge hit with my students. And then my favorite is the slice of pumpkin pie that looks like a note. So that's all, um, it sort of goes up as decoration, but basically it's an advocacy board so that as adults and people walk by going to whatever it is they're going to, um, they see that. One thing I'm, uh, I have in the set, but I've, I've not done it in the last couple years, I'm probably gonna do it again this year, um, is hand out little um, cutouts for each kid and they can say, what does music do for you? What does music do for you? And there's a little place where they can uh, fill in how music affects them or why they love music. And they're actually doing something right now, the pumpkin grams, which are going around. That's not a, something that I've done, but like homeroom teachers are doing like, thanks so much for blah, blah, blah. And it's a, a Halloween sort of activity. Well, this would tie right in. You could explain, you know, this goes along with the pumpkin gram or the thank you notes or the, you know, you've already been doing your room. And then you could put that, you know, staple those up around all these posters that you've already put up and it will be beautiful and exciting and parents love seeing kid writing on the wall and so it'd be a really super easy and fun bulletin board but I, I wanted to make sure I shared that because gotta start thinking about Thanksgiving gotta start thinking about bulletin boards gotta think about how many days you're gonna miss all of that sort of stuff so sorry I'm just now remembering to talk about that but it's something we got to think about okay first grade so um, first graders come in, they make their circle. We do, um, as I talked about earlier, sort of an echo back and forth with clapping, echo back and forth with other sorts of body percussion. We do vocal exploration. We do a little bit of solfege. One of the things up on the board, I have um, <clears throat> these solfege hand signs with these little colorful dots. Now I use just sort of a rainbow coloring that you can get these in um, boom wacker colors, but I don't use boom wacker, so I don't really need the colors. Um, but so what they have up here is just the hand sign plus a little dot with, with color in it with the word. And so um, I have the whole set, do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do, in a big column, and I pull out the ones that we know. I sort of pull them over to the side so they're sort of highlighted, and then that, per, that sort of helps kids sort of 
pull out and select the ones that we know already. Um, and then we use those as a visual, sort of a, a, a ladder, a solfege ladder, so that they can say like, oh, these are the four we're gonna choose from for this echoing activity. And these are always up on my board. Um, they're, you know, you could, you know, put a magnet on the back and just stick them to the board. But I have these out all the time so that kids can always sort of reference them and visualize them. Um, <clears throat> and, I, and I always pull them off to the side for the ones that I'm using that week. Another part of that resource, um, I have, you know, a little bit later, I take some blue painter's tape and I make, you know, a staff on the board. And so I have the same exact look, the same exact dots, only without the hand signs, that then I can move around on the, the five line staff. Um, I've got those printed and available ready to go for when I do it later, but it's nice that it's sort of themed together so that what they've seen before they see again and they make a connection. And then I also have these little mini baby versions, <laughs> which we also use for other activities throughout the year. But again, same coloring, same theme, same everything so that they can connect like, oh, this activity is sort of different but it looks like what we've already done before. It's nice to have all of that sort of together in the same theme, the same look, so that as you're going through the year, kids make easier connections. <clears throat> That's one of the beautiful things about color coding and you know having something that you can use for a lot of different areas of the room, a, a resource you can use in a lot of different ways. So those are, um, I made those, they're called music dots and I put a link to those, but um, there's a version for Solfege, there's a version for Notes of the Treble Clef Staff, all the same coloring, same shapes. There's one for body percussion. So you can use that resource for a lot of different things that sort of all go together and then are themed together and you can just reuse and reuse and reuse and just print it once and use it over and over again for all different sorts of activities. But that is just a quick sort of part of that echoing back and forth, that beginning opening activity that I do in the first few minutes with students. We pull out our tone blocks and um, I have a couple, I, I don't know why, but the teacher before me bought like a class set of tone blocks. So like 40 tone blocks. I was trying a couple years ago to figure out like, what am I gonna do with all these tone blocks? But um, we, we do a little lesson where it's just an echo back and forth of how to play the tone block. And um, it again, just fits into these first few minutes of class so that they get to have their hands on an instrument quick and in and out and they love it. And um, so basically what they do is I hand out a tone block to every other student and you know I'll play and then they'll echo and I'll play and they'll echo and I'll play and they'll echo and I'll play and they'll echo. We'll do about four examples and then I have them take their tone block, stick their mallet inside and hand it to the kid on their left. And then we repeat that process. Four examples, put your mallet in the tone block, hand it to the kid on your left. And of course I have to stand in the middle of the circle and show like this is your left, this is your left. <laughs> um, but we do that activity and then we'll do a steady beat instead of the, the rhythm, we'll do a steady beat, we'll play, you know, and then if we get really into it and really good at it, the kids who don't have a tone block will play the steady beat on their knees, and the other kids will play, a, will echo back a rhythm while, while some kids keep a steady beat. That's, that's like for when they're really good at it. But it's, it's fun to be able to do that to get them to differentiate between steady beat and rhythm, and it's fun for them to play with a mallet on an instrument um, some of these sound better than others. Not, not so good. But for the purposes of what we're doing, what we're doing in this class, it, it really doesn't matter if they're the most gorgeous sound. I want them to just have the experience with the mallet and the experience listening and doing the differentiation between tone block, or sorry, between rhythm and steady beat. So we play with the tone blocks um, and then I take a, just a few minutes to just rehash like what is a mallet and we talk about a mallet is basically just a stick and on one end there's you know like a ball or a bigger portion or something and so we go through and do just a quick you know like hmm mallet or not we, we talked about this in kindergarten but um, it's just fun for help them sort of differentiate and then to, to keep hearing the word mallet over and over and over. Um, so that they keep getting that into their head because that's a vocabulary word they're going to use a lot. So, and when I only see kids every seven days, it's I want to I want them to remember it. So I'll say like you know thumbs up if it's a mallet, thumbs down if it's not. And so I'll hold one up as an example, and they'll do a thumbs up, and I'll say you're right because it's a stick, and on one end there's like a ball sort of a shape. So that's right, that's a mallet. Great. How about this one? Thumbs up for a mallet, thumbs down for not a mallet. You know, and we'll do that back and forth. I have a lot of different examples. I show them this one, which I say, 
thumbs up for mallet, thumbs down for not a mallet. And they say thumbs up. I'm like, yeah, even though it, even though it's like a ball in the end, it looks like a marshmallow on the end. It's we'd still call it a mallet. We'd still we'd still say that's a mallet. My favorite thing to do, so you know, so sometimes I'll throw in an actual stick, you know, just <laughs> to get them to think. But my favorite thing to do is to to hold the mallet like this with the ball end in my hand and go stick or mallet. You know, thumbs up if it's a mallet, thumbs down if it's not. And they do a thumbs down and they go, ha ha, I tricked you. <laughs> I was holding that part and the other in in my hand, but oh, it's a mallet actually. And then they giggle at that and they think that's fun. And you can pull out really fun big examples like this huge, huge mallet um, to get them thinking about different sizes, different shapes. Those are all mallets. Um, I especially love like the one that, like this that sort of has a squished end on it. It doesn't look exactly the same, but it is still, we'd still call it a mallet to sort of get them to think about, you know, comparing, contrasting to see those everyday objects and to be able to put a name to them um, and not just call it a stick. So to, to give it more of that specific vocabulary. Um, I also take the time to show them this one, the broken mallet, because someone was playing too hard. Oh my gosh. And you know what? When they were playing the tone block, they were not being super careful and they didn't use the ball part of the mallet to hit the tone block. They were hitting with a stick, which still makes an okay sound, but guess what? They hit so hard with the stick part of the mallet that the, the mallet broke in half. Oh, it's a bummer. Now I have to throw this away. Isn't that sad? And so I like showing that I can keep around a broken mallet. I show them this to show them like, yeah, because you got, you got to be really careful to make sure that when you play that actually the mallet, the ball part is the part that's tapping and that you're being careful because we don't want our mallets, you know, we don't want things to break. We want to be more careful with them. So it's fun to go through and to, to give them that example, to give them that visual, to show them not, not to just say like, don't hit so hard. But here's why you don't hit so harder. You gotta hit with the with the ball end of the mount. Well, here's why you have to do that. Because I think kids respond better to it when you explain a little bit why. They, they like to know the reason why. And so that gives them a little bit of a visual. And those mallets just broke on their own because legitimately a kid hit too hard by not. <laughs> so I, I didn't like break a mallet to use as an example. Like it was broken. And so um, it was. it's easy to now use that as sort of an object lesson. Literally, liter a literal object plus. <laughs> okay, so um, that's all in the first few minutes of class. Um, then we do Old King Glory on the Mountain, which my kids in first grade are just learning. Um, and there are a couple different versions of it. The version I posted in the links page is not a, the exact version I use, but it's pretty close. Um, and the song that I've learned uh, goes, Old King Glory on the mountain. The mountain was so high that it nearly touched the sky with a one, two, three, follow me. And I say, I'm singing this song about a king. I want you to listen. If you can see, if you can figure out his name. So I sing the song, old king glory on the mountain, the mountain. And by that point, the cans have shot up, but I don't stop to get their answer. I sing the whole thing through. And then I say, what, what was his name? And you know, kids, old king glory. You're right. It's king glory. And he was old. His name isn't Old King Glory. It was, it was just King Glory, but he was old. We are describing him. So that's his name. Good. Now listen to where he lives. And then I sing the whole thing through again. And of course, kids like, Old King Glory on the mountain. Hands up, right? But I sing through the whole thing because I want them to hear it multiple times before I ask them to sing it. So the hand goes up and at the end, yeah, he lives on the mountain. This was not any sort, it was not just any mountain. It was a very special mountain. Listen for what makes this mountain special. Old King Glory on the mountain. The mountain was so high that it nearly touched the sky with a one, two, three, follow me. It was so high it nearly touched the sky. Now can a mountain really touch the sky? Not really, but we say that it touches the sky. It's so close, it's so high. It's like it's almost touching the sky. And, and I go through like that. I ask those questions along the way to get them to actively listen for things, but also so that they're listening through the whole song on repeat three or four times before I ask them to actually sing it. And then when it's their turn to sing, they've basically learned the whole thing. So what, what that turns into is a, a game. Um, once they've learned it, once we sing it, then I walk around and I walk around the circle, the big circle that we're sitting in. Old King Glory on the mountain. I'm just walking, walking. On the part that goes with a one, two, three, follow me. There are different ways that you can do this. And on the links page that I share, there's a different version of it. But the way I do it is I tap three kids on a one, two, 
three, follow me, and I have them walk behind me because that's what the song says, follow me. So then I walk around, I'm King Glory, and then I tap three more kids. By the time the song is done, the entire class is in a circle following me, and then, except for one, the last kid I leave sitting, the last kid who, who's, and it's a little awkward for him or her or them to be sitting just in the circle all by themselves. And so then that kid becomes king or queen or um, you know emperor glory, whatever we wanna call them. And so then what they get to do is they get to wear a little crown, my tambourine crown, and they get to hold a little scepter and they get to walk around and they get to do the one, two, three. And so it's just a, a fun song. We could do it two or three times. Kids would, again, it's another one of those things that kids would do for the rest of their lives if they were allowed, but they it's just a super fun song. You could easily play an accompaniment on the ukulele if you wanted or a xylophone or whatever. Um, if you're the one doing the accompaniment, it's very, very simple um, and one that you could do with just a couple chords. Okay, and then um, we have learned Pumpkin on the Vine. The pumpkin on the vine, the pumpkin on the vine. I picked the one that weighed a ton, that's the one that's mine. And I previewed this in the last video, but I have these foam pumpkins and they're connected by one long green string. And I have magnets on the back, so on the board are two long pumpkins connected by the string and there's sort of like a, looks sort of like a clothesline hanging between them. Well, then we play around with form. The first part of the song, the pumpkin on the vine, the pumpkin on the vine, we'll call part A, right? And then, um, pumpkin, pumpkin, pumpkin on the vine, pumpkin, pumpkin, that's the one that's mine. And I shared this in that last, in the last lesson, that we call part B. And, and what's fun is that we talk about how do you label different parts of a song. You know, I start with part A and, um, you know, say like, well, the next part of the song, here it is. Oh, you don't know what it is. Is it A or is it B? You're gonna to have to listen really carefully. If it sounds just like A, then you're gonna to have to call this part A too. But if it sounds different, if there are different words or if the music sounds different, you'll have to call it B. So listen carefully. And then they listen, pumpkin, pumpkin, pumpkin on the vine. And I sing the whole way through. And we realize that's not the same, so we have to call this part B. Okay, so we've got an A, we've got a B. Oh my goodness, guess what? There's another part of the song. Oh man, if it sounds like part A, the pumpkin on the vine, the pumpkin on the vine, we'll have to call it A. If it sounds like pumpkin, pumpkin, pumpkin on the vine, we'll have to call it B. If it sounds like something else, what will we call it? Part C, I guess. Well, just listen. The pumpkin on the vine, the pumpkin on the vine, and it goes, part A, yes, you're right. And so every time we learn a new part, we hang it on the vine. There's just a little paper clip, but we just hang it on the vine. And we eventually end up with an ABA form, but then you know we might decide we wanna change that. So I'll have a kid come up and I'll have them rearrange however they want. You know, maybe they'll do B, B, A, A. Maybe they'll do B, B, A. Maybe they'll do just B, B. Maybe they'll do A, A, A. I don't know, whatever the kid chooses. I even have a pumpkin um, with a C on it in case, you know, I don't know, we add a new part. But it's fun because we take about five minutes. They already know part A and part B from the last lesson. So they get to sort of rearrange and, and come up with whatever they want. And it's fun because then we sing the version they create. And so, um, so they uh, move it around and then they create whatever um, they want. They get to create whatever form they want. So it's a super cool version of the song um, and it's a sort of an older song. The B part I just came up with and created on my own. Um, but it's just a super fun um, thing that kids get to create their own form and their own version. Okay, and then after that we do um, an old lady who swallowed a fly. In the last lesson we did the old lady who was not afraid of anything, but now we do the old lady who, um, we do the old lady who swallowed a fly, and I have um, a, an old lady. Um, I've been looking for one of these uh, for years. It's, um, let's see. Sorry. Um, I have this super fun old puppet. Um, it's not really a puppet, it's actually just sort of a plush thing, but I found it through one of those great music teacher Facebook pages like the music teacher buy, sell, trade, um, or the music teacher, uh, you know, Facebook seller optional groups. Anyway, um, I've been looking for one for years because it comes with these different parts of the song. Each one of these little uh, elements, so the cat, the bird, 
the dog. It starts with the fly. Let me see if I can find the fly. And as you're teaching the song, you can then, act, I mean, it's fun because you can use whatever version of the song you want. Um, so there was an old lady who swallowed a fly. I don't know why she swallowed a fly. Perhaps she'll die. Or you could do just, I don't know why. Or you could do whatever you want in case you wanted to take out the mortality element. But the fun thing is that this little thing actually eats the fly as you go along. And so the kids are like, where did that go? I'm like, I don't know, she ate it. I don't know how she ate it. Anyway, but it's fun because it has all these different little elements. I have no idea where you could buy this one brand new. So if, if you know where you could buy it brand new, please um, let me know. But um, I've, I've only ever seen it on like those garage sale groups. So keep looking for it. It's a super fun um, version to have of this song. I also like leaving this for subs because they like it and they like being able to, to teach the song that they actually know. Um, and so this is this is sort of how I teach the old lady who swallowed a fly. When I do the little old lady who is not afraid of anything, I, I pull this little old lady out too, and she's that little old lady for that lesson, and then becomes the little old lady who swallowed a fly. If you want more old lady who swallowed a fly resources, guess what? I <laughs> I have an entire page on Amazon of like a hundred thousand different books because whoever thought this was a great song story decided, you know. There should be a, a bajillion books of the old lady who swallowed a fly. So let me see if I can pull out a couple of the iconic ones. Um, there's this book, which you may have seen before, super huge, oversized, the old lady who swallowed a fly. Um, this is fun because it has the cutout. So every page you flip, you see uh, what comes behind, what comes through. So the old lady who swallows like that, that's sort of fun. Um, and this is a pretty, I guess pretty common, pretty famous one. The other one um, that won a Caldecott honor is this one by um, Sims Tabak. And it's another great one with sort of fun visuals um, where kids get to see uh, another sort of a cutout where they can see through the old lady. But um, it's fun to see those different parts of the old lady or, or sorry, the parts of the things that she eats. Let's see. And then, of course, there's the series that I already talked about, uh, the one by Lucille Calandro, illustrated by Jared Lee. I shared a little bit about this one. Um, there, There is like every version of this. This one is the Halloween version. There was an old lady who swallowed a bat. But let's see. There, um, I don't know that it shows on this book all the different versions. She swallows a bell. She swallows some snow. She, she swallows like a chick for Easter, she swallows a clover or something for, for St. Patrick's Day. You could get a version of this for every holiday plus by this author. Um, it's very, very well known. Let's see. Um, then there are some other more interesting versions and on that Amazon page I found some really cool ones. I just searched around for 20, 30 minutes and found some really cool versions. I'm going to get a couple different ones. Um, one that I really like is this one called There Was a Bold Lady Who Wanted a Star. This is by uh, Charisse Miracle Harper. And this is the old lady who wanted, or there was a bold lady who wanted a star. I don't know why she wanted a star. It seemed too far. There was a bold lady who bought some shoes. She ran for miles, then stopped for a snooze. She bought the shoes to catch the star. I don't know why she wanted a star. It seemed too far. So then she buys all these different things. She eventually, I think she buys a rocket. So let's see. She rode the rocket back to the plane, flew the plane back to the car, drove the car back to the bike. And it sort of goes through um, all the things that she wanted to catch. She did catch the star and she put it in her pocket. It's sort of a fun version. Let's see. And then, of course, there's this wonderful one called I Know a Shy Fellow Who Swallowed a Cello. And this person keeps eating musical instruments. This is by Barbara Gariel, illustrated by John O'Brien. And um, he keeps eating things and eventually eats a tiny little bell and that makes him, you know, burp up all the other things he's eaten along the way, like a harp and a fiddle and a saxophone and a cello and all these. It's it's super fun because then you could talk about sort of different instruments, very musical, um, but again, super easy to, to include this one in. And I put that one actually in my sub tub too. It's a great one to have. Um, <clears throat> and that's the ones that I own, but like I said, there are a ton on the links page. Um, one more that you might wanna have that I have around this time of year is Old Black Fly. 
um, because I, it's it seems to tie into the lady who swallowed the fly. Um, it ties into sort of I think about a, um, a sh the shoe turkey which I do in um, another grade. So this one uses the word shoe. Uh, shoo 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 oh, old black fly's been buzzing around buzzing around buzzing around old black fly's been buzzing around and he had a very busy bad day and I usually sing that to kids but it's an alphabet book um, he ate the crust of the apple pie he bothered the baby and made her cry shoo fly shoo fly shoo and I have kids go shoo fly shoo fly shoo he coughed on the cookies with the chocolate bits. He drove the dog nearly out of his wits. Shoo, fly, shoo, fly, shoo. And the kids can go, shoo, fly, shoo, fly, shoo, like shoo, shoo, shoo. And so this is, a, it's a great precursor if you're gonna teach shoo turkey to another grade or to this grade. And you're shoo, shoo, get away. And it also ties in thematically to the, to swallowing the fly or to having the fly around. So it's fun because kids get to sort of sing back but also ties in with all the other things that you might already be doing at this time of year. And then I think that, oh yeah, um, this is my favorite part where he rides the red ribbon on grandma's head. That's, that's my favorite illustration in the whole thing. <laughs> but eventually he um, gets swatted, poor black fly. Anyway, um, this is another fun, fun little book to tie in. I know I've talked about a lot of books, but there, I, I use books all the time. I think books are so great because you get to, um, you know, tie in literacy, but also give a lot of visuals that maybe you wouldn't have otherwise without the books. So let me just check in here in some comments. There's a newer version of the puppet from Constructive Playthings, says Jennifer, and she says she'll link it once she finds it. Cool. If you can find it, let me know. We'll put it on the links page, or you can just tie it into the conversation here. Let's see. Um, yeah, and then there are people talking about kids teaching each other some of the mallet tricks, um, doing compare contrast for thinking so for some of the things we've already talked a little bit. And then someone said, Artie is the queen. Artie is the queen. You should get mallet madness if you don't already have it. Well, that's my first grade lesson. Um, and it, you know, it ties in a lot of things in the first just few minutes we do body percussion and solfege and copying and mounts versus sticks and tone blocks trying to get all of those things in very quickly. We do Old King Glory, a little bit of play with form on, with the pumpkin on the vine, which still even if you, you know, take that past Halloween is a great thing for Thanksgiving or harvest because it doesn't really say anything about Halloween at all. And so um, it's fun to have that around for um, for Thanksgiving even, and then the old lady who swallowed a fly. Um, so that's sort of where my lesson goes, but I like doing old lady who swallowed a fly now because there are 100,000 versions of the book that I could pull out later in the year or put in a sub, um, you know, a substitute lesson if I'm ever gone or sick. They can pull out another version and the kids already know the song and it's sort of a continuation of something that they already know. And so that's, it's fun for them to get to do that. But I love doing it sort of earlier in the year so I can use it again later as needed. Um, if you have any questions along the way, um, you know, oh great, Jennifer added the uh, link in there. So check that out if you're interested in the old lady who swallows the fly puppet. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me either through um, a private message or through a comment on the Facebook page or on the Facebook group, the Every Moment Matters Music Education Community Facebook group. Um, feel free to ask any question you might have. Because like I said at the beginning of the, the video, as music teachers, we don't get enough time to ask one another questions or to spend time together, um, you know, saying like, how do you do that? Or how do you bring out this lesson? Or what resources do you use? And I always feel like I have these questions that I'm like, I should maybe know this by now, but I don't know, you know, maybe not. And so it's always good to ask those questions. So please reach out if, if you have questions. Um, if you're in Saskatchewan, I hope I'll see you this weekend um, because I'm going to be there at the Saskatchewan Music Conference on Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So I hope I'll get to see you there. If not, I hope we connect in the future. Um, and like I said, f um, find the Facebook group and we can connect there or ask any questions you might have. Hope you have a great week. Um, getting ready for Halloween. We can make it through the week and into the Thanksgiving month. Okay, everyone, have a great night. Thanks so much for spending your night with me.